Hi guys, welcome to this session in Microsoft Access. In this module, I want to show you how you can create a simple database using just one table of information. So first of all, I'm on the opening screen and I'm going to create a blank database. So I'll just select this option. Now, Access is slightly different to Excel, Word and PowerPoint and other programs in that you have to name it first. You don't do save as and then name it, you just name it straight away. So I'm going to name this database Courses and then click on Create. Once you click on Create, you get a table opening up, which you can see here, and it's expecting you to fill in these columns of information. First of all, put in a title, etc, etc. Now what I like to do is, is go into Design View of a table and then set the scene from design. So a table is the bedrock of an access database. You have to create tables and then you've got other objects which I'll go through shortly which you then interrogate tables with which are queries, forms, reports. Now if I go into design on this one it's asking me to save this table straight away. So the first table I want to do is a customer table. So TBL is the qualifier that you should use customer without any spaces table customer or customers with an s and then click ok and then it will create that and it drops it into design view so you've got view design view so you can flip between the two toggle between the two now i don't want this to just be called id i want this to be called customer id and then i want this to be an auto number so basically what that means the data type of which there are many in this list and I'll go through some of these later on. Every time I add a new customer it will automatically add a new number to that record. So the customer ID 1, then 2, then 3 etc etc. So then customer name. I could put name but Microsoft Access doesn't like you to use the word name. So customer name. I'm pressing tab and it's defaulting to short text which is as you can see down the bottom here about 255 characters. So that's ample for a customer's name. If it's too much, you can actually adjust that. It probably is actually for a customer's name. Let's drop that down to 50 characters. You've got to be careful with that, though, because if you set this to 50 and you get a customer's name that's more than 50, it truncates it, it chops it off. So then you lose that information or you can't store that information. So then we'll go for address and then city postcode. and whatever other fields you, you think you might need. Now, while you're still developing a database, you can come back into this and add extra fields if you've missed some out. But each of these fields, as you click on them, have properties down the bottom here, which you can see where I'm sitting down here. Look, your size, I've already changed on that one. I haven't bothered with the address. Now, you might have some address issues. If that's not long enough, you can select a longer one. The other field types in here, you've got all this long text, so that gives you like a few pages of text if you need that many. You've got number, large number. It basically says it does what it says on the tin. Date and time, currency if you want uh, any currency fields in here. Auto number is what we're using at the top there. A yes no field. Have they got a pension? Yes no. Are they a regular customer? Yes no. O L E object means object linked and embedded. So that's when you want maybe want to put um, a CV attached to person or some contract documents you might have for this customer. You want to attach it. Uh, or embed it, should I say, not attach it to um, this record. You've got a hyperlink, which is like a, a web page, an attachment, so you can have multiple attachments. So if you've got one customer that does lots of purchase or purchases or has lots of invoices, you might have lots of attachments. Calculated field, if you wanted to use calculations, you can at this level, simple calculations, and then the lookup wizard. And then properties down the bottom here to display or not display or some rules and some input mass that you can use. But for now, I just want to leave it as a straightforward, simple table. Now, I'll just save what I've done and then click on View. And then you see those column headings that I've just created. So you're basically just creating the structure. This is now ready to enter a customer. So if I just type one customer, so let's say AMAC Limited is a customer and their address is one red Red Road Leads, say. I'm tabbing my keyboard to come across the fields 
and you can see it's filling that in and then LE22RT totally made up postcode and then tab again it comes down to record 2 and you see it says new there so it says new and as soon as I type in this next box that will come that will change to a number 2 so I'm going to go to red road there next to him tab leads and then another postcode now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in some of these records and then come back to this in a, in a short while so you can see the completed list. So I've just added a couple of extra companies in here. So each time I'm adding one, I'm just pressing my tab key and it goes on to the next line. So one of the good things about an access database is when you enter data, as long as you tab off the record, which this is a record, as long as you tab off that, the data is in the database and saved. You do not need to save the information. When it comes up and prompts you to save things, so if I just adjust this column width like that, if I go to close this, it will ask me to save it, but it's asking me to save the changes to the layout. So it's asking me to save the fact that I did that. So if I just cancel this off and then open that up again. So it's not actually saving the data. The data is automatically saved as soon as you import it. So there is a little table of customers. If I close that down, it's asking me to save the layout. Again, I'll say yes, but it's not asking me to save the data. Now, that's a table and it sits there as a database object. Now, another database object is a query. A query is what you use to interrogate the information in this table. Now, to create a query, on the top here, on the ribbon, you've, next to home, you've got create. And then there's tables, so I can create another table there. Query wizard or query by design, which is what I'm going to use. I'm clicking on this and you get what's called the query by example grid good name what you have to do is drag the table or use this option add tables over here onto this top area there so i'm just going to drag that don't really need this it's just an extra step now what you need to do is get these fields into this grid and there are several ways you can do that if i double click at the top there the whole thing goes pink and I can drag and drop the whole list of columns down like that. If I just get rid of these for a minute, delete them off, I could have clicked this little asterisk, double clicked, and it just comes down as a, like a pack of cards, if you like. All these columns are all stacked there. If I run the query, you'll see the information is all there. Go back into design. So that's quite a useful option when you've got lots and lots of columns but I'm just going to get rid of that one as well so I'll highlight that column delete that um, I could bring them down double click I can click into this area and drop the arrow down and select whichever way you want to do it but what I'm going to do is the first option I did which was double click on the title and drag and drop the whole lot like that so I've got all the, the columns that I want now you've got a little tick box there which basically means show me when you run the query or not if I run the query, that's showing all the information. If I go back into design, you can now see that it's back to design with all the ticks on. Now, underneath the show area, you've got criteria and or, and then I've missed out this little bit here where it says sort. So you can actually sort by columns. So sorting by multiple columns, you can do in here. So if you want to sort by customer name, I'll put that to ascending. So it's going to sort by customer name in ascending order. If I run that, a map base so that sorted it you can see that and if I do that the other way around just so you can see that it does work descending it's doing it the other way around so you can do sorts if you want I'll put it back to ascending makes more sense it's totally up to you and you can sort by whichever column you want so this column first then that column etc etc it just goes left to right whichever is first it will do that first if there's a duplicate it will then look at the next sort and so on and so on now what I want to do is show you basically how to do a simple query that's going to interrogate some information in the city column. So if I want to show only records that, can, that are from leads, what I need to do on the criteria line is type leads. And when I click away from that, you'll see you get these two little quote symbols. So that means it's recognizing that as a text field, which it is. When I run that, I should only see leads. I do. I'm doing Control S to save that. Now when you save a query, 
So table has TBL in it. Query the naming convention convention is QRY, and I'll just put leads. So really, this is just a demonstration of how you create a simple query, but a query that you you would name that meant something to you and it would be a query to remember that you need the information all the time if it's not a, something that you need all the time it's probably just a filter that you need to do and if i just close this query down for a second so it sits there look if i go back to the table if i just wanted leads as a one-off i could just do similar to what you can in excel like so and just filter it in place like that and then um, i can remove that filter by selecting all that's just a one-off. I don't need to save queries if I just want to do that. This would be um, something that I need to base reports on and things like that, which is what I'm going to do. So I've got customers in leads. Now I want to um, report that. If I look at this query, I can print that off, but it's not very nice. But what you would do, what you should do in Access is create reports to print off because they are your output, your management output, and that's what looks better. And you can put logos and branding on a report so let's do that one so i've got this selected create now you've got options here report wizard i there's only a couple of columns here i'm just going to go report and see what that looks like now it's truncated that a little bit um it's gone onto two pages because this is a a, um, a portrait page so i'm going to get rid of that and no Go through the wizard i'll go through the wizard and see if i can get it to look better than that report wizard i could have gone into design on that one and sorted it out through design but this this is just another example using the wizard so because i'm on the query it's showing me the query there but you've got a drop down list at the top there with the other options in there the other objects what fields do i want i want all the fields go next now, do I want to do any grouping? Customer name is what I want. Customer name. So it's just going to do a report by customer name. Now, obviously, this is just going to give you their address. Um, I could group it by city, and it would group people. I will do it by city, actually. So if I take that back. City will have more than one customer in it. So I'm grouping by city. Follow it through. You've got the sort options here. It's on ascending, descending. I'll leave it on ascending. Now, this is where I can change the paper to landscape and then next then it's asking for a title rpt is the prefix for a report it's looking at the query leads and then finish and it should drop it on for you nice and neat and you can see now you've got plenty of space it's not dropping onto two pages and again you can save this and use it uh, later date so if i close it down this is how it works guys and i'll close see there's only two records for leads there now, if I, this is a table, if I create another company and have them in leads, so let's go for Wasp. It's quite hard to think of um, different names. Let's say these are in leads as well. LE212FG. I don't know if that's a real postcode. Hopefully not. Tab off the record. So that's now in my database. If I open this, Remember, this is looking at that query. I don't need to open the query for this to work. If I just double click on this, I should have three records from leads. And I do. These are all from leads. Query leads. Now, if I want this sort of query for everything, this sort of report, should I say, for everything, if I close that one down and do just do another one, so this time I'll click on this one so it's active. I'll close this out of the way. No. So I'll... So I remember I was saying no to the changes in layout, not no to the data. If I go back into it, look. It's all still there. Okay, so again, create report. Report wizard. So it's on customers. I'm taking all, all five fields across and I'm going to group by city. There we go. Next. It's on ascending. Next. Landscape. Next. And then... This is just going to be a report, breaking it down so I can tell which cities my customers are in. And then finish. And there you go. Three customers in Bradford, one in Halifax, and three in Leeds. So that's quite a useful report as well. So I'll close that one down. So I've now got two reports, one query. 
what I haven't got is a form. So the, these are the main objects. So you've got tables. I've only done one table. You've got queries. You've got reports. So that's your data in. And this is your interrogation. This is your data out. Now, forms have got two uses, really. One is as, as a mechanism to input data into a table or query. And then another one, which is a bit more advanced from where we're at the moment, is used to navigate around a database, a navigational form, which I'll do at a later date. But let's create a form based on, a simple form based on this table. Create form. I don't need to go through the wizard because it's a very basic table. Click on form and it will just create a form for me straight away with those fields. Now I am in what's called layout view. If I go drop this arrow down, you've got layout view, you've got form view. That's how it would look. That's the end product. And then you've got design view where you can adjust some of this, these fields if you, if you so wish. So if I, if I didn't want the custom ID field to be that long. Now, if I See, I'm moving them all as a group at the moment, even though I've only got that one selected. They're all moving. If I go to um, Arrange at the top there, you've got this option here to remove layout, which will basically take it out of this table format. And then now, when I click on one of these, I can just, in isolation, move that. Didn't get rid of the layout. Remove layout. That's it. So... Bring that one across. So now it's in isolation. The customer name needs to be a bit longer than that. Address probably longer still. City's okay. Postcode's okay. Let's have a look at that. So you go back to form design, view, customer name is all squashed up. So I've totally messed that up somehow. Let's just, yeah, I've got customer ID sitting behind it. Don't know how I did that, but. To move them separately, so if you get these boxes in the corner, that, that grey box there, if I just push that in line with that, it's customer name that I want, uh, customer ID that I want you to reduce. Customer name could be quite long because it's the company name. And then you mess about with this, have a quick look, keep looking, and then you're happy with it or you're not happy with it. But basically, you create forms that are user friendly, easy to use, and easy to navigate around. So I'm okay with this when I did it. It's gonna ask me, do I want to save it? Yes, I do. What I put in front of this one, or what I'm gonna put in front of this one, is just FRM for form, just looking at the table customers. Okay, so now, instead of going into the table to do a new customer, I should go to the form and do a new customer. So down the bottom here, you've got some navigation arrows, and then you've got a little asterisk there, new, click that it just goes to a blank record so let's do a new customer so I'll just call it Smith limited pressing tab still so he's at 25 blue road let's go for leads remember the query will pick up leads pressing tab again le 21 1we and then I must tab off this record or close the form down, otherwise it's just pending. If I leave it like that, it's just pending. It's not in the database. But let's just have a quick check of that, actually. Yeah, it's not. It's not there. That's Smith Limited. The last record is Wasp because it's still pending. But as soon as I press tab, now if I go into customers, it's in there now. So you must remember to do that. It's, it's quite easy to forget to do that, but that's what you need to do. So now if I close this form down for now, and if I run the query report query leads, that should pick up that extra one, Smith. So I've, got, I've now got four records, and that is working because that report is based on this query leads, which is picking up all the cities from leads. So now, now we've got a table, a query, a form, and a couple of reports. So those are the four main objects in Access. You've got macros, which we'll cover on a, di a different session which is another object as well. But for now, that's all I want to cover on this little session. Quick table, a very simple query, an input form, and a couple of reports. So hopefully that was of use, got you started in Microsoft Access, which is a great product. I use it all the time. Anyhow, hopefully that was of use. Thank you for your time, and I'll catch you on the next one.